I know you're adopted, but that doesn't make you a human. Yeah, get out of here. Oh, what's going on, guys? So, today, I'm in lockdown for at least another week. Can't go diving, film underwater. So, I wanted to start a series called What I Learned Today. So, this is going to be episode number one. Some are going to be short, because I don't learn a lot. Some will be long. So... Let's get into this one. Hmm? Critter Hunter. So today I want to talk about the psychedelic frogfish. I know I've probably talked about it before. Like I knew it existed. I knew it's on my critter bucket list. Especially for frogfish. It is like the holy grail of all frogfish. Especially for underwater photographers, naturalists, and whatever. But a little bit, maybe a month ago, I had Dan Gary on, who's a marine biologist who specializes in frogfish. And he actually got to go find the psychedelic. So I went down the rabbit hole this week and just kept studying. But to be honest, there's not a lot known about the psychedelic. So... I'm just going to talk about what I did find out because probably some of you think it's just as interesting as I do. So what makes the psychedelic frogfish interesting to me is two things. One is what it looks like. It's super unique compared to all of the frogfish. Um, as you can see in this photo, they got crazy eyes with the lines coming out of their eyes and looking all crazy and psychedelic and... Like you're on a mushroom trip or something. And they're super cool looking. Uh, and, you know, they look a lot different than any other frogfish. But I think what really makes them cool is their rarity. And they're only found on one island in the whole world. And that's Ambon in Indonesia. Which is super remote and hard to get to. Um... Not hard to get to, but a ton of traveling if you're coming from Europe, the States, whatever. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. This frogfish is so cool, um, but he's all, is he, is he threat? I try to look it up. Is he threatened? Is he on the endangered species list? And it, it doesn't say, it says conservation unknown. And I'm like, wow, how could it be unknown? The coolest frogfish in the world and there's not enough people studying them to even know if they're rare common threatened anything and i'm and and they've only ever been known to be found around Amba, ambon island or ambon bay so during my interview with dan geary i asked him why why is that like how come here we can find hairy frogfish you know there's 40 or 50 different species of frogfish how come they're everywhere in the gold in the coral triangle? You can find hairy frogfish in Anilau, Dowin, Limbe Straits, Rajampat, all over. So how come they get distributed more as a species and not the psychedelic frogfish? And it's all speculation. Well, for them, it's educated guess, but. Regular frogfish, when they breed, their eggs kind of, when they're hatched, they just kind of go off into the current and they're spread out a lot more. And also you can find frogfish, for example, this entire coast where I'm at is the coast of Negros, the uh, southern coast, I believe, of Negros Oriental. And it's just open water, although, of course, the shoreline is shallow. Those eggs, they think, are laid upstream a little bit, a little more into the Visayas. And then they just catch currents and float down and are caught everywhere. So, like here in Darwin, but probably same in Anilau and all the hot spots for frogfish, you'll see a lot of different species spread out. But in, in Ambon, the psychedelic frogfish... And I'll, I'll show you some photos. Uh, they actually hold on to their eggs for a long time on their side. They don't put them in their mouth like some frogfish. Um, and they don't release them when they're born. They don't release them into an open ocean current. 
so that they can float like plankton and find a new home. So Ambon Bay is pretty secluded and cut off from the world. So if there's only a handful of breeding psychedelic frogfish and they're only in this one little bay in the world, of course those eggs, which already have a low probability of surviving, uh, they're only stuck there. So that's my guess. That's Dan Geary's explanation, although he hasn't studied that exact species. Uh, but I just thought that was interesting how some species can propagate all over, all over the tropics, all over the coral triangle at least. And another similar species just is secluded to one spot. It's kind of the same with seahorse species. I just did a video last week about rare pygmy seahorses. But I think what I can take out of any of these videos and any of these species is that there's not enough information about them. There's not enough people studying them to preserve them. And there should be a lot more. So hopefully these kind of videos get people interested, get them researching psychedelic frogfish on their own and you know maybe maybe preserving an entire species so that's all i have for you today if you want to see a psychedelic frogfish for yourself you're gonna to have to head to ambon and even then they're only sighted like once or twice a year i got friends that are in finland or in the u.s who uh keep in touch with this a few dive sitters in Ambon Bay and whenever they finally spot a frogfish they'll email people all over the world say hey we see one we see one and they'll fly across the world at one single day's notice just to see this guy um, so yeah he's definitely noteworthy and a great a great species for what I learned today episode one <laughs> so thank you guys for watching next week is gonna be a little bit longer one but it's gonna be awesome and I hope to see you guys there. Make sure to subscribe. My little community is growing and I'd love to, I'd love to have you as part of it. So hit that thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Subscribe.